I don't know what I'm going to do. You mightn't see me until next year. You might see me in a couple of weeks' time. It really, really depends. We have our answer. Rory is back in action this week, and with the season winding down, there is still much to play for. Rory stamped 2016 by claiming his first FedEx Cup title. Can he start another charge this week at the Northern Trust? Plus, Lexi Thompson rebounded from a slow start on Sunday and rallied to pick up a half point thanks to one of the most incredible stretches of golf in Solheim Cup history. She will join us live today to tell us how she flipped the script on the back nine to cement her name as a Solheim Cup legend. That would be the weirdest round of golf I've ever played. Um, front nine, I don't think I was awake, and the back nine, I just played lights out. And our resident travel expert, Matt Janella, will be taking us all on a journey to some of the most breathtaking golf courses and locations in Ireland. If you have ever thought about planning a dream vacation across the pond, you won't want to miss our insider's info. That and much more on Morning Drive today, Wednesday, August 23rd, 2017. Good morning. Welcome back inside Studio AP. I'm Damon Hack alongside the big timer, Charlie Rammer. What's up, pal? Good to be with you. Great to be with you, as always. And uh, you know, we're on the front end of FedEx Cups. It just seems like we were here last mm. week. I guess we're getting older, Damon. We are you know? getting older. <laughs> I mean, the, the years certainly speed up, but I'm very much looking forward to the playoffs this yeah. year. Year after year, we, we seem to have great drama in the playoffs. Of course, culminating at East Lake, my home course yes. uh, at Georgia Tech. It's always a special week for me. Uh, when I get to go there uh, for the week and years like this year, I'm not going to be there, but I get to watch it on TV. But uh, uh, I'm sure we're going to have another great round of playoffs mm. to Speaking finish of off the great, season. How about great drama? Last night, David Faraday on Hollywood Game Night. Let's take a look at what happened. Even I don't know what this is. Stacy, you got it. Hey, boy. Yeah. Where'd you go, David? <laughs> and David Faraday hugging Darius Rucker. That's his mm. guest next Monday night, 9 p.m. on Faraday. Yeah, two, two of the biggest hearted people that I know, <laughs> David Faraday and Darius yeah. Rucker. That's going to be a great show on Monday night. Uh, for those of you who don't know a whole lot about Darius, uh, Darius's golf game, he loves mm. it. And he's played a lot of golf over the years. When he's out touring, yeah. often I'm the one who gets a call to get him on a golf course somewhere. He'll roll right into a club, you know, on, on Saturday morning, a nice country club. They'll jump out of the bus and go play golf. And they come pick him up and he goes, and does a concert wow. that night. He loves the game. I can't wait to uh, hear that conversation between uh, David and Darius. Does he love it as much as, uh, as I love the game? He does. He does. He's right okay. in there with you. Right there. One Absolutely A and one loves B. It. Yeah. Right. Speaking of stars, yes, Rory McIlroy back. He is going to play golf this week. He said he wasn't sure. He is sure. Yesterday, he got his week in New York kicked off by hitting some golf balls out of Yankee Stadium, the iconic venue. Good to see him. We don't know if he's healthy. We're going to find out, but at least he's going to give it a go. Plans to play all four weeks defend that FedEx Cup title, you know, channeling, channeling his inner Aaron Judge, getting some wedges and some short irons out of Yankee Stadium. So last year when he won the FedEx Cup, Rory was ranked 34th going into the playoffs. This year, he's 44, so we'll need to be looking to close the gap on the top five, led by Hideki Matsuyama. Charlie, that's exactly what he did last year. It's very interesting. You remember on that final Sunday, we lost our great friend and co-founder of Golf Channel, Arnold Palmer. So much of what Rory McIlroy did and understood Understandably so, it was overshadowed. So, Charlie, we thought it'd be a good idea to look back at that final Sunday of last season at the Tour Championship in Atlanta. Rory McIlroy entering this event sixth in the FedEx Cup standings with his second shot from the fairway on the par 4 16. Yeah, late in the fourth quarter, needing some magic to happen. And boy, did he get it. That's from 138 yards, took it right to the bucket. Now, all of a sudden, he's thinking, I got a chance to uh, maybe win this thing. How about those shoulders, just the reaction? Boom, left, right, left, right. Now on 18, Rory down by one, needs to make a birdie, get up and down to get into a playoff. That bunker has a lot of depth to it. Sure, he had some green to work with, but it was a downhill lie. That was a heck of a touch shot in a big, big situation. That's ultimately what put him in the playoff. Against Kevin Chappell and Ryan Moore. Now the first playoff hole, Rory, his second shot from the rough on the par 5, 18th, spin in his club. Well, he hit a huge tee shot around the corner to get it down there. Actually, he's a little unlucky that it uh, got in that rough, but he handled that Bermuda grass rough perfectly. What an amazing play in that close for Eagle. 
and the win, Charlie Reimer. Gotta go left. Gotta go left. Oh. He can't believe that didn't go left. Uh, wow, what a great effort to win it outright right there, the playoff. And just a beautiful setting. The sun is setting here. This is the fourth playoff hole. Rory, his tee shot. I've hit this tee shot quite a few times up the hill into the sun. I've never hit anything like this. Oh my goodness, that put him in absolutely perfect position to attack with a second. Uh, you know, at, at this point, I mean, you knew it was special when he holed out when he came through here, but Ryan Moore had this for par to put some pressure on Rory. And you know, it's just one of those kinds of days. I mean, Ryan put the pressure on Roy. Now Roy's got this to win, and you just knew he was going to make it. Right there, the, the drama, the setting song, the Tour Championship, the, the, the FedEx Cup, all with that putt. And, and it started on 16 with that hole out that we just saw. This was an amazing day of golf. And um, it just got overshadowed by the news events of the day, of course, with Mr. Palmer passing. Absolutely. But uh, hopefully seeing that, our fans will start getting fired up about the playoffs and start today. And maybe Roy Mack will be fired up as well. He is the all-time leader in playoff wins with four. You see his tee time alongside Sung Kang and Keegan Bradley, 7.53 a.m. Eastern time on the first tee. Charlie Reimer, Roy McIlroy last year was needing to save his season at this time of the year. This year, you know, I was with him in Northern Ireland and with him in Scotland at the Open Championship. If he was clearly searching, you know, doing buddies trips to, to play Lynx golf, trying to find some momentum. Where do you see him right now going into these playoffs? I'm not sure that he's 100% from the injuries that riddled him earlier this year. You know, sort of like a rib thing. It's a, it's a tough deal. It, it really put him behind schedule. Uh, golfers are, are creatures of habit. You know, you get in a routine, and that's from day to day, from, from month to month, from year to year. Think how far out of his routine he's been this year, Damon. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, it, it hurts you in your practice, getting the reps. Uh, you know, I, I know that for much of this year he's been on a ball count. You only get so many balls warming up. Uh, at Quail Hollow, I got a chance to uh, spend a little bit of time with his dad, Jerry. Just a, just a few minutes as we were walking down the practice round. Delightful people the McElroys are. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, Jerry, I know you've been around him. You know, he, he, he's a lot of fun. But he said, you know what, it has been a tough year for Roy. He's not sure he's 100% on the injury, but he's getting very close. And we saw that. Think, go, back, go back to the WGC Bridgestone up at, at Firestone. The way that Roy McElroy drove the ball that week, uh, all, all but, I believe, four or five drives, he hit over 300 yards that week. That's a good indicator that he's getting close. Yeah. Uh, but I think that he's still not getting the performance that he wants. And when he has played, he's played some pretty good golf this year. It's not it, you can't say that he's played horrible because he has played some pretty good golf. Just not Roy McIlroy yeah. type golf. But I believe he's close. I'm glad he made the decision to, to enter the playoffs. Obviously, that was up in the air. And, and uh, hopefully we see him get on a nice roll because when he's going, yeah. he's still the best on the planet. It's got to be tough for him seeing his peer group, Brooks Kepka and Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas, winning majors while he's convalescing, trying to put his season together. Travis Fulton will have more on Rory McIlroy next hour, what he needs to do to perhaps go back to back in the FedEx Cup. Also happening now, yes, we said the men, they're in New York. The women, they are in Ottawa, Canada for the Canadian Open. Yes, there's Lydia Ko. What a year she had last year. What did she do? Four wins last season. How about Ariadne Jutanagar? Five wins last season. They dueled for so many LPGA season-long awards, but this season, Charlie, just one win combined. That goes to Jutanagarn. Right now, So Young Yu and Lexi Thompson have replaced Co. and Jutanagarn atop the Rolex rankings. Seeing these numbers, the missed cuts, the fact that they have only won one tournament combined compared to nine last season, I want to focus on Lydia because she has 14 wins in her young career, but none in over a year, Charlie Reimer. What's going on with this delightful young woman? Well, I certainly would have put the over-under on combined wins from these two, maybe like six or seven. You'd think. Yeah, I definitely would have put it there. But uh, uh, I think things were going fine for Lydia Ko until I started caddying for her. So it's your fault. <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, Lydia. She got the pink eye that week. Actually, she had to withdraw did. a caddy for on Wednesday in the pro am. But uh, the thing with Lydia is uh, she she has to depend on her accuracy. And and if you look at her stats this year, she's putted the ball well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the putting is fine. Uh, she's down a little bit in, on on driving distance, which is no big deal. I mean, that's sort of where she is. But she's 47th in greens and regulation. On tour, and she's still, you know, it, it hitting greens at a clip of uh, right at 75 percent, which isn't bad. But when, when you don't drive the ball as far as she does, you have to hit a ton of greens. She needs to be up a little bit higher in in greens and regulation, and and I think that. 
all the changes that she's made, uh, I mean, she's basically changed everything you could possibly change uh, in, in a golf bag, outside a golf bag, coaches, caddies, that sort of stuff. Um, at some point, that, that has to take a toll because you can start changing variables, yeah. but, but at some point, you if you're having an issue, okay, so I've changed this, I've changed that, I've changed something else, well, what, where, do I, where do I go to blame? You know, so if, if you're changing equipment, you've changed ball, you've changed coaches, you know, is maybe something's not dialed in, right? It is, a, is it a lie angle? Is his ball flying a little bit differently? And I think that's probably been a part of the yeah. issue. She'll get it sorted out, though. I, I think no her optimism will be a good 15th club for her. People don't realize, and I know you spent time with her, yeah. how optimistic she oh, is. No and she does not get stressed out yeah. at all. Yeah. She will relax and figure this out. Uh, it's just a little bit of a down year for her. Yeah, you talk about a lot of the changes she's going through. Speaking of those changes, Travis Fulton's going to focus on one of them right now. Good morning, Travis. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, lots of changes, wholesale changes for Lydia Co. And from the technique standpoint, the one thing we know for sure, there's no guarantees in the exact time frame when they're going to transfer transfer to the golf course and for Lydia Ko, former world number one, when they're going to turn in to wins. I spoke with Gary Gilchrist, her coach yesterday, and, and they feel good about the changes that they've made in their game. They see progress. Now it's about being patient and they feel like as she gains some confidence, makes it more instinctive that you're going to start to see it show up on the golf course and get back into the winner's circle. And I want to share with you a couple of the things that they've done here over the last few months. Now I've got a right post here snug to Lydia Coe's right leg here. Not much difference here at address from both views, but when you go back, the first change here is we take it halfway back. They really wanted to settle down how much lateral her lower body would move early in the backswing. Your pelvis can slide from side to side. And with Lydia, her pelvis would slide quite a bit to the right, even get into that post or outside of that post early in the backswing. As we continue to turn to the top here, you'll see that right hip turn and stay right inside that post right there. And in addition to that, they feel like with her right hip there, she can stay much more centered with her head and her left arm now also is working a little bit flatter, a little bit deeper back behind this way across her shoulder plane. One of the things that Lydia would do from time to time when her right hip would slide to lateral, her left arm would lift a little bit, and they felt like those things would kind of change the sequence and her timing a bit back down to impact. So they like these changes. They feel like they're in place as we roll it down now, and you bring it down to the delivery position. They feel like the club's in a good spot here in the toe line. Again, once again, the head very centered. And then from there, she can deliver the club face to the back of the ball, irons driver through the bag consistently and then continue to rotate and let the club exit just under the left shoulder so the changes are in place you can see the difference in the right hip you can see the changes in the left arm now it's just about building some confidence, allowing it to transfer to the golf course and be more instinctive. And if they can do that, they feel like she'll get back to the winner's circle. Matty G, good morning to you. Good morning, Travis, and good morning to you at home. Coming up on today's show, we're taking a two-part journey to one of my favorite places to play golf. We're going to Ireland. We're going to La Hinch, County Sligo, and all the way up to Bally Liffin. Plus, we're going to be looking at your pictures of your golf trips to Ireland. If you have some, you want to send them into GC Morning Drive. Golf Mana finishing up at La Hinch at 10.15 p.m. I'll tell you, Chantel, you finish golf at La Hinch at 10.15 p.m. It's magical, it's spiritual, but you're probably going to go to bed hungry. They stopped serving over there in Ireland at about 9 p.m., so I have a backup plan. Over to you for now. All right, I'll add that to my bucket list. Still plenty to come on Morning Drive. Good morning to everybody. Let's take a look at the tee sheet for what is coming up. The number one golfer in the FedEx Cup playoffs, Hideki Matsuyama, with three wins this season. We've got a swing breakdown on him, plus Henrik Stenson, the most recent winner on the PGA Tour, after a 64 on Sunday and winning the Wyndham Championship. We'll look at his form going into the first event of the FedEx Cup playoffs in the Northern Trust when he joins us live on Morning Drive. And Lexi Thompson put on a show at the Solheim Cup after an admittedly miserable front nine and being four down, she had a comeback for the history books. Don't miss an interview with Lexi on winning with the Team USA. Damon, over to you. All right, Chantel, you know, we just talked about Roy McIlroy's peer group a few minutes ago. That would include Brooks Kepka, major champion from Aaron Hills, the U.S. Open, getting his week underway at Glen Oaks, number seven in the FedEx Cup standings. A big two hours ahead, Henrik Stenson, Lexi Thompson, and more. We're back after this.